Hello everyone and welcome to this exciting orientation session on the ETL tinkering curriculum. So on behalf of the whole Atal Innovation Mission team, I would like to welcome everyone who has joined this live stream. So uh, we had recently launched the ETL tinkering curriculum a few weeks ago. Uh, the curriculum is aimed to provide a structured learning path to your ETL needs. Today we'll be having a short introduction about the curriculum that we have just released and also the ADAPT platform and how you can use it in your school. So today we have the Maker Card team with us. We have Mithun, Mohan, and Cecily from the Maker Card team. Uh, Mithun, who would you like to go ahead? Thank you so much, Suman, for that. And good afternoon, guys. Thank you so much for joining the session. <clears throat> I know all of you would be uh, very excited to understand about the curriculum and the exciting things we have for you. So before we begin, I'll start with a very quick introduction about the background and what our program is. So uh, we all know that this space of technological innovation in which we are all in, right? We are in a space where we have tools that promise us a very comfortable life on one hand, like there is innovations happening very rapidly. And with these technologies, one more thing that is happening is the technologies are emerging very rapidly. And with this, we need to learn and adapt to the change. And this changing is something which happens in the job market as well, right? And with these changes happening in the job market, one more thing uh, that has changed or one which thing which have also, also realized is about the importance of 21st century skills, right? Skills like critical thinking, problem solving, collaboration, and communication, along with the ability to self-learn are the essential and relevant things which are also very important in the workspace. And these skills are something which are very important to drive innovation and social change in the country over the next few decades. And uh, with the national education policy of 2020, we know that these goals are very clearly laid out. And one more thing which national education policy which focus a lot is on experiential learning and conceptual clarity over growth learning. So the making or the tinkering philosophy is exactly this type of an approach by centering our learning through exploration, experimentation and play. So what happens in this type of learning is it also creates a room for failure encouraging the youth to take risks and exercise their creativity without any fear. So uh, this was something that we had, like Maker Gut had when we started collaborating with Atel Innovation Mission at NITI-IO. And we realized that this is an exciting opportunity to realize the goals of NEP and put tinkering philosophy into practice. So the curriculum revamp and the curriculum which we have developed is something that has emerged as a result of conversations with a lot of teachers across the country. So one thing which the teachers shared is they are really excited and interested in making and having these delivered to their students. But one thing which they lacked was the resources that could have helped them to get started from scratch. So the curriculum that we have developed, the manual is mainly aimed to fill this gap. So it has been designed to support you from this part, right? How can we start implementing it from the classrooms from scratch, from a very basic level to slowly and gradually take the students as well as the teachers through the advanced levels. So the uh, many of our activities, particularly in level one and level two, can be performed with the space and tools that are already available in your hand and in your labs. So uh, the development of this manual was a great experience for all of us. And this is just a very beginning and MakerCut is very excited to support all of you in many other ways through mentorships, through trainings and assessment resources. And uh, over the next decade, what we are committed to is building a strong network and a movement of makers, educators, as well as the youth who can assure the stage in the local, national and global level. And we strongly, strongly believe that all of you, our educators, are the country's best resource to inspire and prepare the youth to lead us into the better future. And uh, we invite all of you to join hands with us to realize this vision. So yeah, I'm not taking a lot of time now. Over to Mohan, our curriculum lead. So he'll take you through the curriculum and give you an idea about how the curriculum is spread across. Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, very good afternoon. And thank you so much, uh, Mithun. And firstly, I would like to uh, thank uh, Atal Innovation Mission uh, for this great opportunity uh, to interact uh, with our educators and also uh, to uh, give a small uh, introduction about the curriculum and what are the resources which are available to them and how to use them. So uh, I'll uh, quickly uh, jump into the uh, curriculum and then uh, we can 
understand uh, what are the different elements of curriculum uh, so where should i access the curriculum first and what are the different elements of curriculum what are uh, the resources uh, which are there uh, for the teachers so so yes so uh, i think we all know that our curriculum is live on our website uh, so it is uh, there live on am.gov.in our atl website so uh, one way uh, to access the curriculum is uh, by uh, simply clicking on this banner atl tinkering curriculum and immediately you will get access to the levels and the online platform within the curriculum this is one way to access it the other way uh, is also uh, you can find the curriculum in AM initiatives in Adult Tinkering Lab. And then within that, uh, you can find another tab called ATL curriculum. And then you can uh, simply click on English. And then you can scroll down to find the fourth one, uh, which is the ATL Tinkering curriculum. So these are the two ways in which you'll be accessing the uh, Adult Tinkering curriculum uh, on the website. Uh, one is by clicking on the banner. The other is by accessing it through AIM initiatives. Uh, so this is these are the two ways you'll be accessing the curriculum. So uh, uh, like uh, Mithun said, this curriculum is uh, uh, spanned across three levels, uh, level one, level two, and level three. Uh, so the idea behind creating three levels is also to give an incremental structure. Uh, so because anybody, any child who comes into uh, the ATL lab for the first time uh, shouldn't be uh, overexposed to technology or shouldn't be overwhelmed with a lot of things which we have in ATL because an ATL lab is kind of a huge makerspace with a lot of equipment, with a lot of technology available right away for the students to tinker and explore. So uh, to just start off with uh, uh, to to start off uh, with a very basic and also to give them a basic understanding, uh, we started off structuring the entire curriculum into three different levels. Uh, one is level one. So level two is kind of an intermediate uh, in difficulty where uh, the uh, sessions which are there in level two are kind of uh, uh, a kind of uh, incremental to level one, but also a little. Uh, less difficult when compared to level three and level three is kind of a challenging level where once students are exposed to level one and level two they'll get an opportunity to uh, do more challenging activities they'll get a, they want to challenge themselves with all the latest technology and we need to give that exposure to them so level three is crafted in a way where uh, the students will be exposed to much challenging projects so uh, I'll quickly uh, click on each uh, level and I'll maybe take one sample session uh, so that I can explain what are the different elements of in each level and also what are the different topics covered in each level and also what one uh, typical session will look like, like what are the elements in each session so that you'll get a fair understanding of each element so that when you all take this to your classrooms, it will be easy for each one of you to deliver. So first, when I click on level one, uh, so this is a PDF which opens up uh, for you uh, when you see like, yeah, like we have cover page, we have the uh, messages and then uh, we also have an about the curriculum uh, page, which clearly uh, talks about uh, the overview of the curriculum, the curriculum objectives, why we have written this curriculum and also the brief structure. So uh, basically to give you uh, an, a broad overview of curriculum structure, uh, so level one basically comprises of five modules. So in level one, we have five technologies which are covered. One is basic electronics, one is mechanics, the other one is 3D design and printing. Then we have data visualization and, and we have design and entrepreneur thinking. So these are the five modules which are there in level one. And uh, likewise, in level two, we have four modules, uh, again, electronics. So if you see the difference, like in level one, we are calling it basic electronics and in level two, it's electronics because we are a step ahead. Uh, like the projects will be a little more challenging when compared to level one. And then we have mechanics, uh, we have 3D design and printing, and then we have design on entrepreneurial thinking. The titles might look a little similar, but the complexity inside the projects is definitely at an incremental level. So similarly, uh, level three also has five modules, electronics, IoT, IoT is a uh, tech, new emerging technology, and then 3D design and printing. We also have an element of woodworking and then design on entrepreneurial thinking. So uh, basically, each du the duration of each session is designed to uh, be around 60, 60 minutes, which is one hour duration. 
and then each level is divided into around 14 to 15 sessions like if you see or level 3 uh, has 17 sessions so it is approximately between 14 and 17 sessions like if you see level 1 we have 14 sessions level 2 uh, we have 13 and level 3 we have around 17 sessions so this is a broad structure of the uh, curriculum and uh, uh, like i said uh, in each uh, level we have different different exercises like if you see uh, in basic electronics, we start off with paper circuits and then we introduce the students to the breadboard and then we talk about series and parallel circuit and then there is a traffic light circuit with a switch. So here if you see again these all sessions are very incremental. The paper circuit is a very basic circuit. It's kind of introduction to LED, battery, uh, to the very very basics of um, electronics and then it is slowly uh, then we are also introducing them to the breadboard because breadboard itself has a lot of elements to discuss uh, like the connections inside the breadboard, how the rails are connected, like vertical, horizontal, all, all of that uh, is very very much covered in detail and they'll also uh, it is and uh, all of these are hands-on sessions uh, so even the introduction to breadboard uh, session is kind of uh, hands-on where sorry okay so uh, the introduction to breadboard uh, session is also hands-on uh, so then uh, we also have uh, the series and parallel circuit. Uh, so that is kind of an incremental uh, in nature. Uh, so again, the series and parallel circuit uh, will basically talk about uh, the different connections like a series connection and a parallel connection. And then uh, we also have a traffic light circuit which is which uh, where uh, students will basically kind of build a traffic uh, light circuit which has uh, uh, a switch. So we are also introducing them to the concept of switch. So uh, this is how uh, the basic electronics uh, is there. And then we have mechanics. In mechanics, we have a grabber where uh, they will uh, build a simple grabber circuit, uh, uh, sorry, a grabber uh, activity where uh, by using popsicle sticks and other things where it can grab and release. And then there is a robotic arm. And in 3D design and printing, we have, uh, so we started off with a keychain where students will uh, actually design and print a 3D keychain and then they'll uh, 3D print a cup. Basically, that is also incremental because a keychain will talk about uh, very basics of layers and all of that. But in cup, the concept of holes, uh, the concept of uh, uh, what to say, blending and the concept of um, you know, bringing uh, objects together, all of that will come and that's kind of an incremental in nature. And then uh, the other interesting topic which we have added is data visualization because uh, a lot of uh, uh, recent uh, things are around data and how we capture the data uh, but since it's a very wide variety of topic there is one session where students will understand how much time they are spending on each thing so it's kind of a data visualization where they'll uh, write down a uh, number of hours which is spent on each day and so that is one simple uh, uh, thing uh, which is introduced and then obviously we have design on entrepreneurial thinking the goal of uh, or the vision of atl is uh, to build uh, more entrepreneurs and we want all our students uh, to be that to be there and so one of the uh, important uh, uh, thing in entrepreneurial thinking is definitely design thinking and prototyping so we want our students uh, to be a very uh, good problem solvers so we start we started off with design thinking as a basic problem solving technique and then in prototyping basically they'll uh, redesign uh, the conventional auto rickshaw so that is uh, uh, that is how the design and entrepreneurial thinking module will start and then we have a final project so it's the end of level one and by the end of level one so it's kind of uh, they will uh, use all the uh, methods and techniques which they have used, they have learned so far and then they will uh, make the uh, they apply design thinking to make the classroom environment they to improve the classroom environment so this is a, a quick walkthrough of of each uh, session now uh, within the level one so uh, now i'll maybe uh, take you uh, through one session in level one so that uh, you can you all can understand what each element uh, is there uh, within each level so so if you see so i'll just maybe take the traffic light uh, circuit as an example 
So if you see uh, each session uh, uh, has uh, uh, like uh, the uh, whatever module or whatever technology they are learning is clearly written here. And what is the session number uh, is clearly written here. And then the title of the uh, 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 the title of the activity is also written there. And then the session starts off with an introduction, the basic introduction uh, to uh, the uh, core concept within it. If if you see uh, in level one in basic electronics, uh, they are actually learning um, from the paper circuits to breadboards to series and parallel. And we are actually introducing them to a switch here. So switch is a new topic which is getting covered. So there is a small introduction about what is a switch, what is an off state, what is a non state what is an open circuit closed circuit so that is the a simple introduction uh, which is uh, given uh, here so this is a short theory uh, which the uh, teachers can start off their session with like uh, instead of directly getting into the activity getting into the step by step so uh, the uh, educators we all can start off with a small introduction uh, when they come into the class like okay here is uh, so do you all know about what is a switch and this is an electrical switch so it, this is an open state on state, off state, open circuit, closed circuit. So starting off with an introduction kind of sets up the tone for the class. So uh, so that is uh, uh, one element which is there uh, in your session. Uh, so the other uh, uh, elements which are there are kind of the timings. Like I said, it is a 60 minute session and what is the module name? What are the grades which is suitable for? And uh, then what are the total number of sessions in this? So this basic electronics has four sessions. And then what is the importance uh, of this particular session? And what are the learning goals? Uh, uh, like what do we want to introduce in this session? So that is uh, one thing which is there. Uh, the other uh, element uh, which is also present uh, in uh, your session is kind of a breakup. So this breakup will help our educators to kind of uh, uh, split our sessions and these timings will basically help us to uh, lead the session. So this is something which you, this is again completely customizable. There is no hard and fast rule that you have to follow the same breakup. So, uh, but this is just a way to uh, give you a kind of a support where, okay, these are different elements in my uh, lesson today and I have to break it up in a certain way. So this is just, a, and these timings are all very much indicative and it completely depends on uh, the facilitator, how he or she would like to take this up in the class. So uh, the Excuse other element, one. yes. Yeah, we can see the table of content today. Can you please uh, change the tab? Okay. Or you can unshare the screen and share it once again. Yeah, to sort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the, it was stuck there. I was scrolling down. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's just. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry uh, for the glitch. Uh, so yeah. So now uh, is I hope the basic electronics is visible. So yeah, all I was uh, saying is that. Just a minute. Okay. Okay. So, uh, uh, so I was showing the same screen. So uh, this is the thing uh, which uh, got uh, hidden in the glitch. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, so I was telling like we have an introduction uh, to the uh, session. So the introduction is uh, clearly uh, 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 given for you. And uh, so as educators, we all can start off uh, with introduction to the uh, module uh, or introduction to the session. Uh, so then the other element which I was mentioning is the time breakup. So uh, uh, the uh, time breakup, which is clearly given here where are like as educators we can use we can you can use this breakup which is readily available for you or uh, like i said this is also very much indicative so uh, and also there is another element where the uh, the importance of this session is given the learning goals or the learning objectives are clearly defined so these are the three elements which i have covered so far which are there in your session uh, so then uh, the other element is also clearly written material required so whatever material rule you will require for this session is clearly uh, given to you so this will also enable all our educators and facilitators to keep the material ready one thing or to also uh, educate our children to uh, get this material uh, whenever they start this project so it's basically to indicate them what what are the different types of materials which are used in this project 
The other thing uh, is the icebreaker. So icebreaker is a very important classroom management technique where uh, we will set up the tone for the uh, students. It is kind of an introductory exercise, uh, which uh, all our educators can start off the session with. It is kind of a fun exercise where uh, it is it is a simple circling time where all our students will sit and they'll uh, have a small icebreaker to just uh, come off with whatever thoughts they have. Everything should, should it is just to break the ice and to give uh, that uh, enthusiasm and to create that excitement for the session. So to assist our uh, teachers uh, uh, and our educators, so we have also provided an icebreaker activity, which is there, which you can also follow that. And uh, the next element uh, within the session uh, are the list of safety measures which the uh, students have to follow. So this is uh, like we are working with various wide varieties of technology and technology also need to have certain safety measures in place. So this is something which you all can communicate with your uh, students so that all the safety uh, uh, methods are followed. And then uh, if then the we have the activity. Uh, so then uh, inside the activity, if you see, there are uh, clear steps which are written. And then each step is also followed with an image. So this is again to uh, help the students uh, to see the image and also to read the step uh, and then correlate the step with the image and then build the activity accordingly. The images will help them to visualize the circuit which is there in front of them and the step will help them to understand what they have to do in that particular circuit. So likewise, each uh, activity is having step-by-step uh, -step instructions which are uh, very detailed. Uh, if you see even the steps are broken down at a very detailed level like in the first step, we are just adding LED, second step, we are just adding the resistors, and then third step, we are adding switches. So likewise, each step is broken down at a very basic level so that uh, every student who is there in our class can easily understand. So the images will also be uh, accompanied and also be uh, by these steps which are, are there and uh, which will also help us as an educators to understand what is happening in that activity just in case our, if our student uh, if any team is stuck somewhere so we can immediately refer to the step and then help them so this is uh, this is one uh, thing which we have and all the uh, activities which are there in our ATL curriculum are uh, having step-by-step -step instructions. Every activity is having detailed step-by-step -step instructions with images. And also every activity is a hands-on activity where uh, students will uh, kind of come, they will do hands-on, and then they will have a uh, entire learning experience. So then after the uh, hands-on activity, uh, we are not closing the uh, circle there. Like it's not that, okay, this activity uh, is completed and then uh, it's done. So we also have a challenge for them uh, because they have learned certain concept and we uh, always like to challenge the students to make, uh, to, uh, uh, make something new and build uh, something better. And also students are very excited to take up any new challenges based on the learnings they had so far. So uh, the challenge uh, is clearly given and there are few hints for the challenge. Again, here also we are not leaving them completely on their own. There are few hints which are given. There is a circuit diagram which is given. So this is kind of a uh, scaffolding which is provided to the uh, children, a kind of support which is uh, provided uh, to the uh, children so that they don't feel over challenged because this is kind of a level one. This is So we just want to know how they are. So how they are thinking. So it's basically to understand the thought process and also to understand the application of it. So we want them to apply their learnings and there should be some opportunity to apply their learnings and this will be one opportunity for them. And then, uh, of course, uh, like uh, all our sessions will have a clear reflection uh, about uh, the activity which they have done because um, like Mithun clearly said, we are also for emphasizing a lot on skills, the 21st century skills like critical thinking, collaboration, communication, and we also want to know how students have felt about the activity, what they have learned about the activity. So we should also give them an opportunity to express themselves. So keeping that uh, in mind, there is a clear uh, uh, set of questions uh, as part of reflection. And every session will be closing uh, with a reflection uh, session where students can uh, answer the questions and then they can reflect on the activity which uh, they have done and also to just reflect on all the skills they have showcased like what kind of communication challenges did they face or how did they felt about the activity so it's kind of a self-reflection activity for the 
students. So, uh, so all the sessions are drafted uh, with a similar uh, uh, framework. So uh, all the sessions start with uh, like they have an introduction, they have a, a icebreaker, and they have clearly written material required, and they have safety measures and step by step instructions, and then a challenge statement, and then it all closes off with a reflection. So the entire session structure, any session you take will follow the same structure. Uh, so the uh, so this will kind of complete the entire learning cycle uh, for the students and will also uh, assist you uh, uh, in your ATL labs when you're uh, leading the session uh, with the students. So this is a brief uh, outline of the uh, uh, structure which we have. Uh, the other, uh, so now the next uh, thing, so this is, uh, this I've taken you all through level one and the activities which we have in level two. So I'll now quickly uh, walk you through uh, uh, sorry, this is level one. So they quickly walk you through level two and level three as well. Uh, so, so level two, like I said, is kind of an intermediate uh, curriculum. And uh, uh, like I said, in level two, uh, we have 13 sessions. And uh, if you see uh, in basic electronics, we are introducing LDR. Uh, we are asked, we are uh, uh, introducing students to solar powered electric fan and we are also introducing Arduino. Slowly we started off with basics of Arduino, uh, which we are not doing it in level one because it's a basic introductory session. And then in, in intermediate thing in level two, we start, we are starting off with Arduino. Even in mechanics, uh, we are giving them hydraulic lift. So we are introducing the concepts of hydraulic bug pot. And then even in 3D design, we have slowly incremented it in a way where they'll build a rocket, a simple mobile holder, which are a little complex when compared to a keychain and or when compared to a cup. So likewise, uh, even in design and entrepreneurial thinking, the sessions are incremental in nature. So, uh, and like I said, every level follows the same structure, uh, which has uh, every session follows the same structure. Uh, then uh, like it has clear introduction, it has step by steps and it has reflection. And uh, like there are also in the first session, you'll also have a clear description of each material which you're using. In each level, every first session, you will see a clear description of each material which you're using this is also to uh, give an introduction to the children on uh, like what is a breadboard this is a small introduction what is a multimeter what is a wire cutter what is a resistor so these are all different elements uh, which uh, our students will also be uh, 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 exposed to and uh, i'll also quickly take you through uh, level three um, so like i said um, level three Level three uh, has again 17 uh, sessions. Then if you see um, like in level three, again, a complete incremental in structure, we are also introducing the concept of PCB etching, like from breadboard to Arduino to PCB. So that's the kind of increment we are bringing in. And in PCB, we are teaching them how to etch the PCB and how to integrate sensors in and actuators within the Arduino. And then how Ohm's law, how to use multimeter, what is a seven segment display? So a little more complex topics coming in. And then we are introducing them to a whole new emerging technology called IoT. In IoT, again, uh, we are introducing them to uh, controlling LED with, mobile, uh, with a uh, mobile app, plant monitoring, then interfacing LDR uh, with DSP32. So we are introducing all of these topics uh, in IoT. And then uh, if you see, even in 3D design, now it has become a lot tougher. Uh, like they will actually design a spanner, uh, which is a real real time spanner, which we can actually use it. And then they'll also build a walking robot using 3D printing. So if you see from keychain till walking robot, the, the sessions are very much incremental in nature at each level. And we are also introducing woodworking uh, because there are there is an element of carpentry and then uh, they'll also make their own simple little birdhouse. Uh, and then we have a, a design and entrepreneurial thinking. Even if you see in design thinking, uh, the final project is about sustainable village. So from uh, uh, the classroom, they'll, act, they'll end up at level three at a village community level. So that's how level one, level two, level three are clearly given. And the session structure remains the same, like introduction and all of that remains the same. But this is how uh, a clear flow is there and a clear structure 
uh, is actually uh, set in place so that uh, it will all be helpful uh, for our uh, educators and facilitators to actually facilitate our ATL uh, classrooms at each level. And uh, this, uh, like I said, is a 60 minute duration uh, session, uh, which will be available. And the, these PDFs are all available on ATL website. And along with this, uh, we also have uh, an uh, online platform called ADAP, where you all can also use the online platform. And I am, uh, I, I mean, we are actually very happy to say that many of our facilitators already started access uh, like we already see a lot of facilitators using the online platform and we would also like more of us to use and uh, I think uh, get the best out of it. And uh, I would like to uh, hand over to uh, Jesse, my colleague. Uh, he will all take you through the online platform, the ADAP, and uh, he'll guide you through what are the different elements in ADAP and how you all can use it. Uh, thank you so much again for this opportunity. It was great uh, orienting you all and thank you so much. Yes, Jaisal, over to you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mohan, for the uh, Mohan already explained in detail about all, all the uh, levels and activities. And now uh, I hope you all, all are understood about the PDF version, how to use PDF version. Then uh, we have a uh, digital version, like it's a it's a mobile app. You can use in the mobile app, uh, and the desktop also you can use. I am going to explain that. Yeah, is it my screen is visible? Yes, it is. Yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, Mohan already explained how to access the level one, uh, level two, level three PDF. Uh, in the, uh, you can see another thing here. It's an online platform. So, you need to click that. Okay, then uh, uh, if you're clicking here, uh, a new uh, page will come. It's called Adapt. Okay. So it is an invitation link. First, you need to click in this link and then you need to sign up with your uh, email ID and password. I already signed in. That's why it's directly coming to the uh, our dashboard. So you, then you can see uh, similar to the PDF, three things, uh, ATL level one, level two and level three. These are the three courses actually. Okay. And each, uh, each courses are 11 to uh, 14 lessons. So to access uh, that thing, uh, you need to click on the level one. Okay. Uh, then you can see the overall uh, lessons. Like first, first lesson is the paper circuit, introduction to breadboard, series and parallel, and DAV graph. If you finish uh, one lesson, uh, you need to be like refreshing question, and you need to finish all the tasks. Then uh, it will uh, come with a green tick. Okay, that means you completed that task. So uh, now I am going to explain the uh, traffic light, light circuit. That's the same thing uh, Mohan already explained using the PDF format. Uh, and one more thing, this is a web, web version, like you can access in your computer. Uh, in the Play Store itself, you can just search ADAP mobile LMS. Okay, then you, you can find a mobile app. Then you can sign up with your uh, email ID and password. And one more, one important thing, first you need to go through this website, then uh, yeah, like enter your email ID and password, then only you can sign in with the mobile app. Okay. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Then uh, I'm going to explain the traffic light circuit. Okay. Because I already opened, that's why it's, it's showing restart lesson. Then it will come from the, the static. Uh, this app is very user friendly in the mobile phone. Actually, no need of app uh, in the Google Chrome or the mobile browser itself. You can get a uh, better view. It's it's primarily optimized for the mobile. We are considering most of the students and teachers are uh, using from the mobile. That's why we are using this type of platform. Mm, this is taking some time. Just one minute.
Uh, usually it will come uh, fast in the mobile. Yeah, this is, uh, uh, this is our first lesson. Yeah, in this lesson, uh, we uh, break down into different topics. First is the introduction to traffic light, make business to dispute. Actually, we are following the same pattern in the PDF. Then, uh, yeah, this is a session. Then click on the let's go. Then it will uh, come to the basic introduction of uh, the traffic light and all. Then we need to click on the continue for the next lesson, next part. Then it shows the material required. Yeah, then it's the same as our PDF. Then uh, importance and value, why we are doing this uh, activity. Then what are the learning uh, goals of this activity? Then this is the session breakup. Uh, we, we are starting with an icebreaker. Then the, uh, actually in this, uh, uh, we are giving importance to the switch. We are teaching the switch here and, and the traffic light. And we are also giving a challenge after that, the reflection and learning. Then this is an icebreaker. You can follow this. Then the safety measures. Then this is our activity. We need to click on the let's go. Yeah, then uh, after like the PDF, it shows the, in the left side, it shows the images and the instructions. This is the step one. Yeah, and this is step two. Yeah, we can scroll like this. Yeah, this is all other steps. Yeah, then uh, if you finish all this, we need to click continue. Then uh, it gives additional challenge. Yeah, challenge. Uh, yeah, uh, we need to make a something like a real traffic like that as a challenge. Yeah, after that, this is the important part. This is the main difference. If you're using the PDF, uh, uh, you, we, we cannot collect the reflections and if you're using the online version, uh, you can uh, you can fill your response here. Which type of uh, which type of circuit uh, is a traffic like series or parallel? So my answer is here, parallel. If you are giving your answer like this, uh, we can monitor how much teachers are uh, uh, submitting these, uh, what are the problems they are facing, or what are their learnings and all. So this is, uh, so try to use this digital platform as much as possible. And this is the second question. How will you apply these skills outside the class? Yeah, uh, I am just, uh, just giving a random thing here. How will you apply these skills outside the class? Then uh, what did you, uh, or your team struggled with your doing this activity, how can you improve next time? I am just taking uh, breadboard usage like that. So you need to fill uh, your exact answer here. How did you uh, contribute to the team and what do you think helped? What else do you, yeah. What communication challenges did, uh, did your team face? How can you uh, your team communicate better next time? Like, yeah, we can break your answers here. Then it's done. So we covered all the part of uh, this lesson. Okay, actually, uh, we can track uh, how much how much students are completed these, uh, uh, what they are learning outcome, uh, like uh, what they are struggling, that type of uh, output we will get from this dashboard. Yeah, uh, similarly, you can use level two and level three. Yeah, these are the things. I'm just summarizing uh, to use this uh, platform, you need to go through uh, this link then sign up with your uh, email ID and password. After that, uh, you can go through this link or you can install the Adapt Mobile LMS. Then you can access these three levels. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Jessica. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah.
Thanks a lot, Jaskeep, for showing the adapt version of the curriculum. Thanks a lot, Mohan, for the for the overview and the full version, the PDF version. It was explained very well. I hope it will uh, help the teachers a lot who have joined this today. Uh, so, I have like just from speaking from AIMS behalf, we sincerely hope that all ATL teachers start using this curriculum from this academic year. And it is uh, it is also like we have just released the three levels of curriculum to now. The other levels, the level four, five, six, also will be released very soon and it will help you to take the students for, for a tinkering journey from, from the start of the like the sixth standard till their eighth, ninth, twelfth, whatever grade you want to go. So, uh, so if the teachers have any doubts, you can ask in the YouTube live chat box. So there have been some uh, questions that have been received till now. So I'll just go through one by one. Yeah. Uh, so. Ume Salman, I'm from Mumbai. She has asked one doubt is that like uh, we, uh, so the level one also has some circuit connection. So can we give it like can we use it for sixth and seventh standard also because they have not yet started learning electrical circuits in their school? Um, yes, ma'am. Uh, so we can uh, start for uh, sixth and seventh. So level one is a very basic introduction. Uh, so you can start off right from grade six, seven, eight. Like if they are not introduced, so you can start off from level one. And if they are not, if you think that the students need that exposure, definitely, I think that will help them. Yes. The curriculum is also very scaffolded from the very beginning. So uh, we start with a very simple activities like paper circuits that they introduce to conductors and non-conductors, which they are learning in sixth. So you can definitely uh, take them, take the sixth graders through the curriculum. Thanks a lot, Mohan, for it. Uh, there's another question from Sudhaman. So Sudhaman is asking like, uh, there are uh, three levels. So how do we plan our academic calendar for the upcoming year? Like most of the sessions are going to start right now. So how do we plan it for the upcoming year? Like the level one, two, three. So how, like what should be the months allocated? How much time would be needed? So considering like, you can say that most of the ATL uh, students come to the lab at least once or twice a week. So based on how, uh, so if like uh, if, if we can start off with level one definitely i mean if if that is started in that way it, it will be very easy for the students uh, to also uh, take it over and uh, since we have uh, each session for one hour and uh, expecting around 32 sessions in an academic year usually if we, if we see uh, working weeks so we can uh, split uh, one session per week or if, if you are getting uh, so we consider two sessions per week because as an as a thing and then the sessions like we have more sessions so you can actually plan accordingly like if if it is level one if you think certain exercises students are already uh, aware of or already equipped with then you can uh, go to the next session so that way you can plan it accordingly but we have around 17 plus 13 plus 14 uh, so th that is the split across each level so uh, so uh, for the 32 weeks which you'll get or 40 weeks which you'll get in an academic year so you can split across uh, we suggest to start from level one till level three but uh, it's uh, like i think uh, yeah it is open to even see the level of the students and if they're already exposed to certain concepts so that particular session can be skipped yeah exactly and additionally i would just like, like to add one thing like no need to wait for students to start it from level six like from sixth grade or seventh grade like even students in ninth grade can start from level one like right it would be easier and helpful to keep it like grade agnostic like you not know, depending on grades because students can get started on this tinkering journey like from like don't consider it as a standard or don't try to link it to the grade you can just start it from level one level two and level three whichever grade it you might be another question that we have is that like uh from where do we get the login for the adapt version? Yeah. Jesse, would you like to take the second? Uh, uh, you need to go through that link only. Okay. In the, uh, then uh, you can see, uh, you can log in with your, your uh, email and password. That's only you need to do. Are you like how you create a Gmail account, right? You can, you yeah. can log in with whatever Gmail account you have. And you can create a password and you can log in and use that app platform. We don't have like specific credentials that we provide. You can log in with your email. Like. 
Yeah. So there would be no no additional login credentials that would be provided by the team for this. So you can directly go in and you can log in just like you use Facebook, just like you use Link, Google. As, it's as simple as it. You can create a new account and you, you can always track your account. So the main advantage of the ADAPT curriculum is that you will always be able to track what we have done. You can just resume for wherever you like wherever you there last time. And uh, like it also helps us like uh, from even send to come to like how many schools have completed what version of the curriculum. So I would recommend all teachers to also keep using SNAP because it's a digital first approach. So uh, another version, another approach would be to print all the three curriculum books. So we would recommend that also if possible and to, so that you can use it. And apart from that, you, you just keep on uploading and updating the ADAPT version wherever you're completing. So, and for any doubts, you can always write to us uh, and email us for any help. Yeah, okay, so. Uh, there are many more questions related to levels and grades. So I'll just uh, uh, mention it once again. So there is, it's not dependent on the levels and grades. You can start from level one from whichever grade you want. Uh, another uh, uh, question we have is that like, is this curriculum in any way linked to the science and uh, science textbooks that they have in school? Uh, like yeah, so uh, I would say it is loosely coupled. Uh, so uh, it's not that it is 100% aligned, and, but it is not that it is not at all aligned. So the topics which are there for each level are loosely coupled to grade six, seven, eight topics or grade nine topics, which we already cover. Let's suppose if it say if we take the element of electricity, uh, so that is we talk about series and parallel connections in around grade seven, grade eight. So all any topic if we take, uh, it is loosely coupled to the uh, 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 NCRT uh, and uh, the curriculum which is already in place. But uh, it is not that every session in or science which you take might not be there, but it is definitely aligned or it is loosely coupled to the grades uh, which is there, which uh, you will be teaching in science. And for that particular specific theory, if you're teaching, you can also connect these activities there and use them uh, wherever you think is suitable for that particular grade. Yeah, thanks a lot, Moon. Uh, yeah, the next question is from Radhika Sharma. So she's asking is that, uh, if there is a reflection session available in every chapter. So this is to be filled by students or teachers or both of them. So uh, reflection sessions is basically for the students. Uh, so when they are uh, interacting with the other team members, because they, uh, all our ATL sessions are team activities, right? Uh, so when they are, so the way they communicate, the way they collaborate, and also some learnings, like what is a series circuit? What is a parallel circuit? If you see there is a question, is a traffic light a series or a parallel circuit? It's kind of a critical thinking question. So so it's, it's for the uh, students, uh, basically. The reflection questions are for the students and it has to be filled within the class. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, so the last question we have is that like from Nagalakshmi Men. So she's asking like, uh, do we have any hard copy or such book available outside in the market? Again? So uh, I'll take this question. So actually ma'am, so we have just released the curriculum and it's available only as a soft copy on the AIM website. So you can directly download it from there. If you need it, you can print it also. There are three levels of curriculum, level one, level two, and level three. So you can use the PDF versions. So uh, this, these would be like considering a similar, something similar to the textbooks that you have used. Apart from that, you can you also use the online ADAPT version. So ADAPT is a simple app which, which will help you to learn the same curriculum digitally. So uh, it's similar to the Coursera or other courses that you take online. So it will help you track your progress. It will also help, help give you badges for your performance and all. So we can use a mixture of both and like whatever suits you the best. So currently we don't have any hard copy available in the market. It will be always a soft copy. If you need, you can print it from this on that. Yeah, adding on to that, like. Uh... I, I would uh, request all of you to try using an app. It's like a very user friendly uh, application and please try to use it on your phones because it is customized to the phone layout and it's very engaging and very active. Like you can use it very easily. So uh, please try using it. Uh, it would really help you in your classes. Yeah. Uh, 
another question i just received it's that like do you have any atl year planner uh, so there is a, a atl yearly calendar the, that we release every month uh, every year so it was also released in the, uh, the same session when we released the atl curriculum so there is a atl calendar of activities you can just type it on google you will get it out it's available on the aim website home page also so you can refer that and uh, one more thing that I would like to announce is that we'll be also conducting many more training sessions online and offline for the teachers also. So if you have any doubts related to the ATL tinkering curriculum, any problems that you face, any suggestions you have, so please write back to us. Please let us know in the WhatsApp groups. We shall surely try to help it and incorporate them because this is a very collaborative process. So we'll need your help in making this successful. So uh, uh, anything you would like to add? Yeah, I think uh, it was wonderful. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. And also, uh, yes, uh, great point, uh, Suman. Like, definitely, it will be it will be a collaborative process, and we look forward for any suggestions, feedback, and something. If you if uh, our teacher community also has to share with us, then definitely looking forward to that. And uh, uh, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much guys for joining in the session and really looking forward to your feedback and see like how this is translating out to your classes. So all the best and please keep sharing all the feedback to us. We'll, we are always open to learning and growth. So yeah. yeah thank you all for the wonderful session. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we've seen lots of the teachers. Yeah, so, yeah, so many so The YouTube live chat is uh, going like everyone is thanking and all. So thank you everyone. Thank you, Mithun, Mohan, and Jaseel once again for joining today's session and helping the teachers go through the curriculum and this orientation, orientation session. So shortly we'll be also circulating a mail with all the teachers and also on the WhatsApp group with the links to all of these, the adapt platform to the curriculum and as well as the recording of this uh, YouTube session. So so do have a look. Uh, so thanks everyone for joining and hope to think there and take eight years to great things. Thank you everyone. Thank you.